is the will of God that we should be in good health always and be healed of every infirmity. If you don't need healing, someone around you definitely might need it. This is your opportunity and for those sick around you to be connected to the teaching of God's word for healing. Don't forget, God's word is God's medicine. I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, you will swim in the miraculous. Power City International presents Harvest of Healing, Miracles, Signs and Wonders, ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date, 11th April to 18th April 2021. Time, Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. daily and on Sunday, first service, 8 a.m. and second service, 11 a.m. GMT plus one. And a rebroadcast on the following radio stations. Radio Aquaibom 90.5 FM Uyo 11 AM to 1 PM XL FM 106.9 Uyo 3 PM Unio FM 100.7 Uyo 3 PM to 5 PM Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 PM to 8 PM Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 PM to 10 PM Heritage Radio 104.9 Uyo, 10 p.m. till midnight daily and also on Kingdom Live Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino and Instagram at Abel Damino Watch Real Time. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminer.
Through which this word is reaching the whole world. Ege proze ke panayata, ege bo shatana bayata, rapato shatega ya, ege pando shotayata. 
that the word will receive confirmation today the bible says and god walking with them confirming the word with signs with miracles following this morning we stand as a church and we know and declare that Allah Papa is preaching the word they went and preached everywhere and the Lord walking with them confirming the word with signs confirming the word with miracles as our Papa is preaching as the Papa is teaching today the Lord is with him and the Lord is walking with him every word shall be confirmed because no word of God is void of power where the word of a king is there is power Apostatega Bayata, Raproseta Manda Yata, Ebrosota Yata, Roposetek, Ebrando Sek, Ebrosotapa, Ebrosotapa, Ebrosapata, Ebrosatapa, Ebrosatapa. He says, When he saw that they had faith to be healed, I want to declare this morning, and men will hear the word, faith to be healed will come alive. Mako Shataga Bayata, Raprosota Bayata, Ebrosataba, Ebrosa. Sataba, Ebro 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 Sataba, Eba Shoteaba, Oskayaba, Ramraya Bosha Tayab, Rateka Boshata, Zuleman Nehosko Boyata. Oh, wave those hands unto Jesus. Libra Yatosa Kayata, Ebro Sataka Yata. Lord, we thank you for confirmation of your word. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise your name this morning. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. I say, in the name of Jesus. I want you to join me. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate the presence of our Papa and our Mama this morning. A very good, 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 good morning applause. A good, good morning shout. A good, good morning celebration. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. For one week we were hearing with the hearing of the ear. But today our eyes have seen. Are you very happy this morning? Our Papa is in the house live. Put your hands together with a shout. Let's receive Dr. Eber Damina. Glory. Somebody excited this morning. Shout a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's pray together. Father, we rejoice that this morning we have access into the deep things of God by the Holy Ghost. And we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity we have to access your word and access the riches of redemption. And we rejoice that we are gifted revelation knowledge. The light of your word shines in our minds. And we thank you that we are being built up, equipped, edified. And we thank you that we are growing daily in the knowledge of all of our resurrection realities. So I ask that as your word comes with clarity this morning, nobody leaves this service the same way they came. We give you praise, glory, and honor for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the world. I do the world naturally. Therefore, today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. We're so glad to welcome all of the social media community. And we want to welcome everyone in the Aquaibom community that is connected to this service by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Aquaibom, Unio FM, Inspiration FM, Heritage FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service 
do somebody a favor do somebody the honor of inviting them to connect to the service this morning god's word is going to come with power and you will be excited and be glad that you got your loved ones to hook up to this service this morning we also want to ask all of our social media community like you've always done you know we love you brothers family and friends on social media we've been on a massive campaign on social media in the last two weeks and the campaign is going to run on for quite a few more weeks we want to reach everybody we can in this you know in the world especially the three billion people on social media so do me the favor you've always done share the video tag some people put them on you know uh, monogram telegram put them on whatsapp group and most especially from today till next saturday if you have people that are sick, even if they're in the hospital, get them to connect to the service, either by Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or get them to connect to the service by radio. It's going to be a week of manifesting the goodness of God through the healing ministry of Jesus. So, we want you to connect. It's going to be a powerful time as we begin the series this morning on the harvest of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. We also want to welcome all our campuses around the world. What a joy to have all our campuses around the world connected to this service. Oh my goodness. Are we excited to have everybody connected this morning? All right. I've just been informed and I want to just announce quickly that today our, our, our back road district opened a campus at Ikot Oku Ikono and the services begin this morning. First service and second service every Sunday and all through the week. So, those of you living in that area of Uyo, if you're hearing me by radio right now, it's at Ikoroku Ikono Campus Power City. You want to be a part of the service, they are meeting right now at 7.30, the first service, and they'll be connecting with the second service. We encourage you to go quickly and identify with brethren and learn Christ together with them. Are we excited to be here this morning? Let's celebrate the word of God before we get into it this morning. <clears throat> is that how you celebrate the word of God in this church <laughs> glory alright you can be seated with your sweet smart self let's get in the word this morning harvest of healing miracles signs and wonders <clears throat> we're examining the subject of healing miracles and uh, we are practically looking at how to apply what redemption what Christ and what the riches of his grace have made available to us as believers. Also, we are examining how to walk in the light of these realities. Almost every one of us here must have encountered the healing power of God at one time or the other in your life. Including those on social media and radio and television. You must have experienced God's healing power at one time or the other in your life so you are not new to the healing power of god and even if you have not experienced it before you you are a candidate for it this morning and uh, you know those that are sick if you know of people that are sick even in the service here you need to reach out to them if you can you know call them or text them or something ask them to tune to the service right now it's very important you know our god wants everybody well because that is his will he's a good god and he wants people to enjoy his goodness now, where there's any pain or sickness or disease, God is not there. Very fundamentally is the way we treat the written word. The way we treat the written word shows how serious we are about the power of God. I repeat, the way we treat the written word reveals how serious we are about the power of God. The written word, that is your Bible. Your Bible is that document of God's word or the document of God's power. You know, we don't say everything that happens in the world is God's power. We know better than that in this church now. We never say that everything that happens in the world is God's power. Why don't we say that? Because we have an information. We have clear information. We have precise information. We have accurate information. The Bible is that information or the Bible is a source of that information that guides us from thinking in error. The Bible is the source of that information that guides us from thinking in error. So the Bible therefore is not just a book of God's of, or a code of conduct or a book that tells you do's and don'ts. 
is a document of God's word. It's a document of God's power. The Bible is a document of God's promises. It's a document of God's plan. The Bible is a document of God's purpose. It's a document of God's intent. The Bible is a document of God's design. God's perfect design and God's perfect will and plan for man. That is why in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4 where Jesus was tempted in both accounts it says Jesus responded to temptation by saying it is written. It is written. It is written. That means that the power of overcoming temptation is in the written word of God. The power to overcome temptation is in the written word of God. So the written word therefore gives us the right kind of information. The written word therefore gives us the right kind of information. Please pay attention. We can safely say that the way you treat the written word, which that is the way you treat the word of God, is the way you treat God. The way you treat the written word, that is the way you treat the word of God, is the way you treat God himself. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Next verse. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That word, the inspiration of God, is the word breath of God. So the scriptures came out of the breath of God. The word doctrine is the word didascalia, which means to teach or to explain, to teach or to explain. So when the scriptures are taught, when the scriptures are explained, the scriptures will bring reproof. The word reproof is the word evidence. Evidence is the same word in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Something that gives us evidence. That is, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence. Same word for reproof. The evidence of things not seen. Mm -mm. So, how do I know God will do something? I look for the evidence of it. How do I know that God will do something? I look for the evidence of it. I cannot rely on my feelings as to know what God will do. I cannot rely on my experiences as to know what God will do. If I want to know what God will do, the evidence of it today is in the written world. The evidence of what God will do now is in the written world. Because the written word is given to us for evidence. Now, so it says, the Bible is my evidence of God's power. Can somebody say that with me very loud? The Bible is my evidence of God's power. Say it one more time, the Bible is my evidence of God's power. Not my feelings, not my experiences. Can I have a powerful amen? So the Bible is my evidence. It's a book of evidence. Alright? Now, faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And I'm going to deal a lot with that in the second service. If you don't know anything, you have no information. Whatever you are doing cannot be called faith. If you don't know something and you don't have information on that stuff, whatever you're doing cannot be called faith. Faith means to believe. You must have believed something said or something heard. 
For example, I believe God. I must therefore believe his evidence. I believe God. I must therefore believe his evidence. The scriptures, that is, the written word is God's evidence. The written word is God's evidence. You don't believe God more than you believe his word. You don't believe God more than you believe his word. That is, you don't be believe a man beyond what he says. You don't believe a man beyond what he says or what he has said. So, if I believe God on any matter, it's because I believe what he has said. If I believe God on any matter, it's because I believe what he has said. How do I know what God has said? I believe the written word. I believe the written word. So, the Bible therefore to us as believers is a book of evidence. The Bible to us as believers is a book of evidence. Please pay attention. I'm going somewhere. If I have never seen a human being speak with tongues before and I read it in the Bible, that's all I need. If I've never seen anybody speak in tongues before and I read my Bible and my Bible tells me this sign shall follow those that believe in my name they shall speak with new tongues. I believe that I will speak with new tongues. Why? It is in the document of evidence. It is in the document of evidence. You know, today we believe that Jesus rose and came back to live in us. Not because we saw him. Not because somebody saw him who told us. We believe it because it is written. We believe it because it is written. So, because it is written in the volume of evidence, I believe it. Are we in the building? I believe it. Say with me very loud, everybody. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I see. I am not moved by the events around me. I believe the written evidence. I didn't have a powerful amen. The scriptures forms the basis for our evidence. So when you say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, you are not bragging on the basis of feelings. You are not bragging on the basis of an experience. You are speaking in the strength of the volume of evidence. You are basically saying, this is what I believe in the written world. This is what I believe in the written word. Why do you believe it? Because it is written. Why do you believe it? Because it is written. When you read the written word and it says the Holy Spirit is in you, I believe it. Why? Because it is written. Not because I feel, I, may, I might have felt, but that's not my basis. My basis is a written word. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? So he says we are corporately and individually the temple of God. Why? The spirit of God dwells in you. The spirit of God dwells in you. So question, how do you know that the spirit of God dwells in you? Because it is written. Because it is written. You had no feeling before you said, this is my right in Christ. This is who I am. All you heard was an evidence. And your evidence was not your feeling. Your evidence was the written word. What about salvation? You are bold after believing 
you are born again after believing. You are God's child after believing in the message of his death, burial, and resurrection. So, you are not just bold. You took a step. You had the gospel. You believe the gospel. You took a step. And then, of course, now that you are saved, you boldly tell others. You boldly preach the same message that saved you so that others can be saved. And there is no feeling to back it up. There's no feeling to back it up. I don't know about you. Some people say they feel something. The day I received Christ, I didn't feel anything. I just believe what I was told that I saw in the Bible. I didn't feel anything at all. In fact, nothing changed. The same way I went out was the same way I came back to my seat. My hand didn't grow taller. Okay? My hair didn't grow taller. Okay? My height didn't change. It's the same me. I didn't feel goose pimples. I just had the good news of the gospel. I believed the message. And the preacher told me, Jesus is inside you. And then he showed me a verse, as many as receive him, he gave them power to become. So I believe. And I went everywhere telling everybody, I am now born again. I am now a child of God. Why? Because I saw it in the volume of evidence. Am I communicating to somebody here? Yeah, that's how we got saved. That's how we got saved. The only thing you have is the written word. So, the written word is the evidence for our believing. The written word is our evidence for our believing. All I have is not even a witness of the spirit. Because before I understood what the witness of the spirit was, it took some years in my Christian journey. So it wasn't even the witness of the spirit. <clears throat> it's basically because the Bible says so. The old believers, for those of you that got born again in the 70s and in the 80s, you will know that we used to sing songs like, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Not I feel it, not I see it. I believe it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Whether I believe it or not, it is settled. Okay? <laughs> I don't have to believe for it to be settled. It was settled. It is because it is settled. That's why I believe it. Am I communicating at all? Okay. But the important thing is that it is settled because God said it and I believe it. Say, I believe the word of God. Uh -huh. That settles it. Why? Because... It is written. It is written. The Bible says it. I believe it. That settles it. I believe it not because I feel it. I believe it not because I feel it. I believe it because it is settled. Forever, O oh God, thy word is what? Settled in heaven. Now, I had something contrary. I said the Bible says it. I believe it. That settles it. Somebody says, you are not truly born again. Oh, you're too late. The Bible says it. I read it. I saw it. I underlined it in my Bible. That settles it. I'm born again. I'm saved. Somebody say, well, salvation is not eternal. You're too late. I received eternal life. It is called everlasting life. It is called the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It is called the spirit is life. So what I receive is the life of God. And the life of God is not temporal. The life of God is eternal. And Christ is my life. Christ is not temporal. I cannot lose Christ. The life in me is Christ himself. How did I know that? I saw it in the book. I believe it. Because it is settled. Teaching good. So the written word is the evidence for your believing. We have gone beyond to feel then believe. We have gone beyond feeling to believe. We are believing whether we feel or not. 
Because eventually the feeling may follow. Hmm. The greatest miracle on earth is salvation. The greatest miracle on earth is salvation. I can't remember feeling saved when I got born again like I said. I can't remember feeling different when I became a new creation. So, the written word is my evidence of salvation. The written word is even our evidence of the unseen God. The unseen God. Our evidence of the unseen God is the written word. It prompts you to pray. It prompts you to preach. It prompts you to praise. It prompts you to worship. Not because you felt anything, but because it is written. It is when you realize it and it dawns on you that eventually it gives you a good feeling. It doesn't start with a feeling. It starts with the persuasion. And sometimes you can be with the persuasion for months before you feel. Christianity is not feeling based. Christianity is knowledge based. Christianity is not feeling based. Christianity is knowledge based. Am I teaching good? In other words, for all Christian activity, conduct, Christian believing, expectation, the Bible is the evidence. For all Christian activity, conduct, Christian believing, expectation, the Bible is the evidence. The Bible is our evidence. For example, if I ask you, what's the proof that that car is yours? What's the proof that you own that land or that property? You bring out the proof. A written document. A written document. The proof that you own the car is that there are particulars of the car. The proof that you own the land and the house, it doesn't matter how many people are fighting you for that land, is that you have a certificate of occupancy. That's a written document. That's your proof that you own the car or the house. You don't say, well, I just liked the car and I drove it. Or, the place that house is built is nice. I'm taking over. You will take over somewhere. That place is located around Ikot Aban Abia. You will take over. There are not that location. There's another location waiting for you. <laughs> Are we in the building here? You don't say, I felt like it. So I entered the car and I drove it. No. You drive the car because you have the documents of ownership. It is the same reason why you believe. You believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth that Jesus rose from the dead. Why? Because it is written and you have the evidence as the proof. That Jesus is alive. It's not because you feel something. It's not because you feel something. Back in the days. When I got born again. Nearly we used to sing the song. I'm not moved by what I feel. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I see. Hallelujah. I'm only moved by the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm only moved by what God says. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so we used to sing such songs because those songs were a reflection of the basis of our faith in Christ. We sang songs that reflected our conviction, our persuasion, our inheritance in Christ Jesus. And they gave us uttermost joy when we sang those songs because they reminded us of our realities in God's word. So, if the Bible says, I am saved, I am saved. 
If the Bible says I am justified and I have right standing with God, yes, I am justified and I have right standing with God irrespective of how I feel. If the Bible says I'm a new creature, I am. I simply believe the evidence of scriptures. Why is it so? Because the written word unveils the living word. The written word unveils the living word. The living word is God himself. A book is nothing more than history. If it talks about something that doesn't exist. The book is nothing more than history or a set of jokes or comics. If all the individuals are fictitious... It's an uphill tax to act like Spider-Man. Huh? Hello? It's an uphill tax to act like Spider-Man or Batman. Is it Batman or Batman? It's an uphill tax. Is it not true? Because Spider-Man flies. How do you fly? In mortality. So that's fictitious or that's comical. That's not real. Mm -mm. But the Bible is not like that. There is a living word behind the written word. The written word is the evidence of the living word. John chapter 1 verse 1. We're going to read to verse 14. In the beginning... Put it up on the screen. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, take note of him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That him is a person or a being. Next verse. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light." That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I believe that. So, the written word unveils the living word. The word became a human being. And the written word is the evidence of the living word. The written word is the evidence of the living word. Just like you have a manual for your phone. You have a manual for your iPad or you have a manual for your computer. Alright? Just like you have a manual for your car. Okay? Now, the manual is written about the phone but the manual is not the phone. The manual of the car is written about the car, but the manual is not the car. So, you have a manual for your car. So, imagine if there was no device. You're just carrying around an empty manual. You like the phone, so you look for the manual from somebody who has the phone. And you're carrying the manual around. Or you love the car, but you can't afford the car. So you stole the manual from someone who owns the car. And you're carrying an empty manual around. 
But the truth is, there is a living word. We are not carrying an empty Bible. There is a living word. In other words, the written word points to the living word. The written word points to the living word. So like we said, the Bible is the evidence of what I believe. I believe it because the Bible says so. I don't believe it because somebody says so somewhere. Or I don't believe it because somebody saw a vision, died and dreamed some dreams and came back. No, I believe it because the Bible says so. The Bible unveils to me the living world. The written word unveils the living word. We said the Bible is for evidence. So, I find out from the Bible. Does God heal? Does God heal? So, I find out from my Bible that the written word says so. That means he does. The written word shows me evidence upon evidence upon evidence of God healing men everywhere. So that means God who healed is still healing and will continue to heal because he never changes. He never changes. Does God cure headaches? I find out in my Bible that he cured headaches. And he still cures headaches. So, I believe he does. Does God raise the dead? Oh, sure. I found out in my Bible that he raised the dead. And he still raises the dead today. Does God cure cancers? Oh, they say cancers are incurable. But I saw where God healed cancers in the Bible. So, he heals cancers Today, does God heal liver conditions? Oh, the Bible says so. So, he does. What about issues of blood? Blood disease, HIV and AIDS. What about blood issues? Syphilis, gonorrhea. God healed, he heals, he keeps healing. A woman with 12 years of blood issues. Blood issues. 12 years without Jesus being intentional about healing him. Because he's altogether lovely and altogether good. Everything on him is good. So she touched some part of him and partook of that goodness. Oh glory to God. If I'm teaching good, shout a powerful amen. I saw it. So that means my evidence of believing is the written word. The way I handle the written word is the way I handle God. Write that down in capital letters. The way I handle the written word is the way I handle God. Write it down somewhere. Mm -mm. My faith in the written word is my faith in God. So, I must therefore see the Bible as the book of evidence. Yeah. Woo! If it is written there, if God ever did it, he will do it again. Hey, are you in the building? If you can point to any evidence of God, whether in the Old Testament or in the gospels or in the epistles if you can point to any evidence of God's goodness then you are a candidate for it to repeat again if it is written there then it is available am I teaching good Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 12 for the word of God is quick. Wow. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and 
of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. A discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So he uses the word him. For the word of God is quick. Talking about a person. What it means is, when you say the word of God, beyond what is written is a person. Beyond what is written is a person. Look at Revelation 19.13. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 19, verse number 13. Are you still here? And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. His name is called the word of God. Which means that Jesus Christ embodies the will of God. Jesus Christ embodies the will of God. Jesus Christ embodies the power of God. He embodies the power of God. The Bible talks about him. The written word unveils the living word. Why? Because the Bible is our book of evidence. You know, if healing is all about God, nobody will be sick. If healing is all about God, nobody will be sick. Why? Because God wants everybody well. Nobody will be sick. Just like if salvation is all about God, nobody will be unsaved. Why? Because God wants everybody saved. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Look at Revelation <clears throat> Revelation, did I say Revelation? John 1 29. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. If it was up to God, then there will be no sinner in the earth today. Oh, yes, it's God's will. Yes, it's God's power. But it's not up to God. So, Faith, faith in God becomes important because it is not all up to God. Someone says God is God. He will do what he will do. No. He will not do what he will do. If you say God is God, he died for our sins, you will be correct. But to say he will do what he will do, you are not correct. He is God, he died for our sins. He is God, he suffered on the cross for us. But when it comes to human beings, you have a part to play. It's not up to God to get everybody saved or everybody healed. You have a part to play in partaking in what God has provided for salvation and for the healing of men. If it's up to God, then the great commission go into all the world and preach the gospel will not be needed. If it's up to God, he will just save everybody. If it's up to God, he will just heal everybody. But it is not all up to God. Are we in the building? Okay. Are you following my thoughts? If to hear and believe was not vital, why will God die? If to hear and believe was not vital, why did God die? God could have just stood up and said, you know what? I save all of you. You are saved. He spoke and it comes to pass. Huh? 
But believing is vital. That's why God had to die. If to hear and believe was not important, if it was up to God alone, why were people beheaded for the gospel? Why were people beheaded? Why, do, why did people die very, 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 you know, painful deaths for the gospel, for this same gospel? It means there's a God part done by his son Jesus. And there is a part I have to play. There is a part I have to play. Which is to hear and believe. Which is to hear and believe. Look at Luke chapter 5 verse 15. <clears throat> I'm just laying foundation. Luke chapter 5 verse number 15. But so much the more when there are a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed. To what? To hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So it's not healing. It's not healing dependent on God's power alone. It is healing made available for man to receive. That's why sometimes in big healing crusades, mass crusades, when healing happens, because we don't have specifics, we think God just moved. You know? God just moved. Blind eyes open, crippled, just walk. There was an explosion of miracles in that big crusade. Ah! God is powerful. God, God is using that man of God seriously. So we think God just healed randomly. One, two, three, take. One, two, three, take. Five, six, seven, take. Ten, eleven, take. Two, three, four, you don't have. Five, six, seven, you don't have. Twenty, twenty-five, not, nothing for you. Forty, forty-five, nothing for you. Sixteen, fifteen, take. Twenty, twenty-four, take. You, 14, 15, your family is too wicked. Nothing for you. We, you know, we think that's the way God operates. <laughs> and you know, mass healing crusades give you that impression. Because why did these people receive and these people did not? It's like God is selective. It, it was like a random supply of miracles. Choir, one, two, three, take the rest, go empty. Uh, <laughs> that's the way we think. And it's because it has not been well explained. But that's not correct. If you read the four gospels, there are two different kinds of healing accounts in the four gospels. We will look at all of them in this series within the week. There is the mass healing and the specific healing. Mass healing and the specific healing. For example, specific healings. Woman with the issue of blood. The widow of Nain. We see the Sy Sy Syrophoenician woman. Then Jairus. Then the leper. Then we see the, the person at the pool of Cilium. And of course, we see the centurion. Those are individual cases. You know why? Individual cases, Jesus always asks them to do something. Is that true? In all the individual cases, all of them did something. Jesus asked them to do something. Do you believe? Yes, Lord, I do. Okay, stand up, take your mat and go. Uh -uh. If I could take my mat, I would have taken it. But now you're asking me to take my mat. Yes, because my power is available, but it is what you do that will determine how much of it you get. I am blind. I, I, I cannot see. Receive your sight. Open your eyes. If I can open, I will have opened before now. Then you are not ready. Open your eyes. Uh -huh. And the eyes open. They did something. Am I teaching? They did something. You remember I taught you the difference between magic and miracles? In individual healings, Jesus always got them to do something. Now, so the normal documentation, individual cases explain the mass miracles. The individual, that means when mass miracles happen, the people in that mass audience did something. It was not selective. It was not randomly that God was busy dropping miracles. 
In Luke chapter 5, Luke told us that they touched his clothes and were healed. You think all they did was touch his clothes? Well, how come in Mark chapter 5, only the woman touched his clothes and was healed? Even his disciples didn't know what he meant by who touched me. Because Peter said, everybody is touching you. How can you say who touched you? So it's not just about holding clothes. You understand? Holding masters, Rapa. It's not about holding clothes. <laughs> it's not about holding clothes. What it means is that the Mark 5 story is an individual case of what all of them did. Now, so don't think that God just moved and then selected who to heal and who not to heal. Why am I saying all of this? Because sometimes we can subtly believe a lie. God didn't just heal those he wanted to heal. No, everybody that God healing believed and did something. The power of God. All right, Luke chapter 5 verse 17. Mm -mm. We're going to get into all those details. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. But look at me everybody. Everybody in that audience didn't get healed. In fact, nobody got healed. The power was present, but nobody got healed. Is it because God doesn't want to heal? No. God has made the power available, but the people did not receive. They didn't take delivery of what was theirs. The power was present to heal everybody. Hey, the power was present to heal everybody, but none of them was healed. Why were they not healed? Because they didn't do something. They didn't place a demand on the power. And so because they made no demand on the power, even though the power was available, they were not healed. Are we in the building? Yeah. They were not healed. Wrong thinking produces wrong believing. Wrong thinking produces wrong believing. A wrong believing will produce wrong speaking. A wrong speaking will produce wrong results. You believe wrong, you speak wrong, you have wrong results. Some will say sickness is the will of God and yet they go to the hospital for the doctor to stop the will of God. You didn't hear what I just said. Some people say sickness is the will of God for them, yet they go to the hospital for the doctors to stop the will of God. Is something not wrong with their thinking? How can something be the will of God and a medical doctor can stop it? So people believe some things wrongly. A subtle belief system that cripples your believing and cripples your believing in God's power. Please pay attention. Never think God selects people he heals. Never think God selects people he heals. Please, never think that. Number one, God never selects who gets saved. God does not select who he saves. Number two, neither does he select whom he heals. He does not select whom he saves. Neither does he select whom he heals or who gets healed. So, healing is not up to God. Healing is not up to God. One more. It is not up to the master. It is not up to God. Neither is it up to the minister. As I'm speaking now, it's not up to me whether you get healed or not. Uh -uh, I've, I'm, I'm doing my part. I'm supplying power. I'm supplying unction. I'm supplying grace by teaching the world. Now the power is available here. It's available on social media. It's available on radio. It's available on television. What you do will determine whether you get healed or not. It's no more God's fault, neither is it Damina's fault. It is now your responsibility. I can be speaking and a cripple stands up 
and begins to walk in the strength of the power that is available. And of course, he can decide, I like the sympathy. I like the apathy. And I like the hand-me-downs. I don't want to walk. Oh, somebody has told me that. I told you, right? In South Africa. I walked to the guy. Others are jumping out of wheelchairs. You know, I went to Cape Town to preach. And they went to a hospital where all the people in that hospital are people on wheelchairs. So they went and brought a busload of them. And that day I preached and the power of God hit the place. And people, they started walking out of the wheelchairs. They, they were leaving their wheelchairs and walking. The whole place broke, ex, broke loose. Excitement all over. Then I saw some of them that were not responding to the power of God. And I came to pray for them. As I got over this man and I laid hands on him, I said, are you ready now to walk? He said, no. I said, why? He said, if I walk, I will not have the welfare package from government. I don't want to walk. I want to stay here so that I can be getting the welfare package from government. I said, oh, I see. So I left him. He enjoys the wheelchair. Some people actually like their sickness because it draws family sentiments and family sympathy. You know, when I was a young boy, I was very naughty as a little boy. I knew that my parents were very, sometimes they were not very, very considerate of me. So I wanted attention. So anytime my parents failed to give me attention, I would just say, ah, my chest. Ah, my chest. Ah, ah. My mother will come, all her body will be shaking. My father will be panicking. Sorry, what is it? Let's go to the hospital. I say, uh, 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 let, me, let me lie down first. Let me lie down first. <laughs> when I say, let me, I know some children here and understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> then I will lie down. My mother will say, how is it now? I say, better. <laughs> Nobody will go out that day. They all be moving around me. All the attention I need, I'll be having it that day. After all, I say, uh, Coke, Coke. <laughs> <laughs> they will go and bring me Coke. I will drink in the afternoon. Sprite, Sprite. <laughs> that day, anything I mention, they will bring it. So anytime I want to have that kind of attention, ah, oh, and you know why I was using chest? Because as a little boy, we went to the mountain. To go and, you know, get some stuff for our primary school. So up on the mountain, you know, naughty children. I went to the edge of high mountain. I went to the edge of the mountain and I was playing at the edge of the mountain and off. I fell from the height of the mountain. I was somersaulting and breaking trees and breaking trees till I landed on the floor. So they took me to the hospital. I had injuries on my chest, injuries all over my body. I was in the hospital for one month. I was on admission. So after the hospital, the chest in now became my winning card. <laughs> so every time I want attention, ah, <laughs> once I shout, ah, you see, everybody will start at attention. The deep, that sickness became a worship object. Ah, everybody says, we worship you. <laughs> and you, know, you know, there are people who just like that kind of attention. So they don't want their problem to go. They want to nurse that disease. And you forget that that disease kills. The thief commit not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The man said, no, I want it. And if you don't want it, well, right now you can get out of that sickness. You can get out of that disease. Why? The power of God is present right here. Why? Because the word of God is preached. And behind the written word is the living word. And the living word is a living force. Somebody shout, I hear you. It's not a feeling. It's something you know. And you walk out of that predicament. That pain don't have to stay there. That disease don't have to stay there. That eye condition don't have to stay there. Oh yes. That, that, that heart disease, that disease in your bones don't have to last one more day. Why? Jesus, who is God. God went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed. Every sickness is an oppression of the devil. Even if it came from lack of sleep. Even if it is because you didn't sleep well that the sickness came. 
That sickness is from the devil. Stop excusing the sickness for not sleeping. Because once you start considering certain natural, natural excuses, you are giving the devil an opportunity to torment you. Sickness is an oppression of the devil. And your body has been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Say with me, I reject every form of sickness. Shout it, let the devil know you made up your mind. One more time, let me know that you are not pampering something. Say pain, you have no reason to stay in my body. Out. Once you know that that disease in your body is illegal, then it is easy for you to push it out. It has no right to stay in that body. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Jesus wanted to go to the centurion's house. He said, don't come to my house. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be well. Speak. I'm a man under authority. I say to one, come, he comes. I say to one, go, he goes. Don't come to my house. That's honor. What is that? That is honor. He honored Jesus. And honor always receives from God. Honor will always receive from God. Don't come to my house. Speak the word only. In Mark chapter 5, the woman touched his clothes. That should show you it's not up to the minister. It's not the minister that will determine your healing. You are the one that will determine your healing. Salvation is not magic. You have to hear the message. You have to believe the message. You have to act on the message. If salvation, which is the greatest miracle of all, a man has a part to play, how much less healing? How much less healing? So, the written word gives us the template, the proof, the evidence to believe. It is not up to God. It is not up to the preacher. The preacher will only do what he can to give you an understanding of your privileges and rights. But ultimately, you will have to take, take, take it. In the four gospels, more often than not, Jesus will ask them, do you believe? Sometimes he says, your faith will make you whole. Or your faith has made you whole. Because there's a part we play. It is not all up to God. God's part is to provide the healing power. To provide the cure. Our part is to receive it. So it is not all up to God. It's, we have to receive it. I've, I have had you know, my body attacked by sickness a number of times. A number of times. And I got healed by standing on the authority of God's word. I got healed by standing on the authority of God's word. I mean, I can go on and on. But today it's not about me. Today it's about you. So I don't want to bore you with my stories. But I've had healing. I've had miracles. Healing. My body gets healed steadily. Without delays. Every time my body makes pain, the healing power of God is working in my body. The healing power of God is working in my body. The healing power of God is working in my body. My body is subject to God's healing power. My body responds to the healing power of God. The healing power of God is at work in my body. All my organs are responding to the healing power of God. There is the power that raised Christ from the dead. The exceeding greatness of his power is on my inside and is working in my system. And my body responds to the healing power of God. I speak that steadily. Steadily, steadily. And as I speak that, I see it come to pass. So, the Bible is the evidence. Remember, faith begins where the will of God is known. We know that God wants you well. That triggers your faith. It triggers your faith. The Bible therefore becomes the evidence for my believing. I believe because the Bible says so. There are, there are times all you should... All you will have is the written word. The symptoms may get worse. Sometimes once you start speaking, the symptoms will increase. As you're speaking, the symptoms will increase. When the symptoms increase, let your mouth talk more. Talk fast. As the symptoms are increasing, let your talk be fast. 
Don't reduce your talking to listen. Because the symptoms are increasing to shut you down and tell you what they want you to hear. You too must speak out. Let them hear what you are saying. The symptoms don't have the final say. You ultimately have the final say based on God's word. Somebody say I hear you. I say somebody say I hear you. The Bible is our evidence. So don't listen to your feelings. I believe, I receive, I act on it. Amen. Just like salvation, feelings don't determine salvation is the word of God. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 as I begin to round up. So I must have the right kind of attitude to the written word. Proverbs 4.20 My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. You need to realize, look at me, that your attitude to the written word is your evidence for physical healing. Your attitude to the written word. In the Hebrew, my son attend. That word attend means to give it first place. That's the way it is in the Hebrew. To give the word of God first place. To incline your ear typically means to give your ear to what I am saying and not listen to something else. You know the airports. The airports. When you put the airports in your ear and you raise the volume high. It doesn't matter what somebody is saying. You're not hearing him. You're only hearing what is in your ears. So when he says incline your ear, what he means is take the word of God and use it to block your ears. Block your ears so that you're not hearing anything else other than the word of God. No matter what they are saying. They are saying the disease can kill you. You're not hearing at all. What you're hearing is that by his stripes I'm healed. What you're hearing is that Jesus healed them all. What you're hearing is that, that, that you are in authority. You trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So while they are running away from you, you're running too. Because you're not hearing what they're hearing. Your ears are blocked. The medical report is not making impact because what you're hearing is louder than what the doctors are saying. You block your ears. To whatever else anybody is saying. Hey, if you stay with the natural cause of your disease, you will die on it. So you better walk away from it and put life into your body. Put life. They are life to those who find them and help. That word health in the Hebrew is medicine. They are medicine. They are health. Medicine to all their flesh. Some Hebrew scholars have said that there are two words that refer to both spoken word and written word. What it implies is that whatever is written in the scripture, give it first place. First place. Then start to say it for you to hear it. See, you must say it loud enough so that you can hear yourself. Don't meditate. Speak it out. I'm healed. I was healed. I remain healed. Sickness cannot stay in my body. The Holy Ghost stays in my body. Holy Ghost and sickness do not stay in the same house. This body is owned by the Holy Ghost. You keep speaking. Am I talking to somebody here? Nobody can speak the word of God to you like you. Open your mouth and speak the word of God to yourself. Yeah, you speak God's word to your body. Your body will hear you. Abel needs to hear Abel speak the word of God. Abel needs to hear the word of God from Abel's lips. Nobody can speak it like you. There is no better preacher than yourself to yourself. So it is believed that when he said attend to my words, it means look at the written word, then put it on your mouth. Incline your ear to it. Sometimes I roll out a number of confessions and I speak them to myself. Attend means give it first place. I give the word all the attention. I listen to the word of God enough. I listen to it well enough. Amen? Meditate day and night. Both Old and New Testament. You shall meditate during day and night. Incline your ears. Don't dwell on the doctor's report. Don't dwell on how you feel. Yeah, we know you feel pain. There's nobody that gets sick without pain. 
The killer in disease is the pain. Some people don't know. The real killer in disease is the pain. You know why the pain? The pain is so that you give up. The pain is to push you to make up your mind to die. That's the mission of the pain. That's why the pain is unbearable. You see people crying, rolling on the floor because of the intent. Satan's strongest weapon is that pain. So the more the pain, the louder your voice. No, it can't stay here. It can't stay here. It can't stay here. It is written. Jesus healed them all. Healing power is moving in my body. You speak it, you act it. You act it. Why do you act it? Because you believe it. You act it because you believe it. And friends, there's healing in this place. Those of you watching online, healing power is right where you are. Jesus is good and is good all the time. He goes about doing good. He heals. He delivers. He's a loving father. And because he loves you, he doesn't want you in pain. Because he loves you, he doesn't want you, you know, incapacitated. Because he loves you, he doesn't want you deformed. Because he loves you, he doesn't want, want you discomforted. He loves you. And he's altogether lovely. And I have news for you. He lives in you. And he lives in you to ensure that you have all that you ask. Stand on your feet. That's all I got for you this morning. Glory to God. I say glory to God. We're going to pray right now. And those of you on television, on radio, we're watching online. The healing power of God is right where you are. We're going to have a harvest of miracles, testimonies right here in this service. Those of you that have organs that are not working, they start working. They start working right now. Say with me, I believe the word of God. Can I hear you shout it like you know what you're talking about? Say it again one more time. Say, I receive the testimony of the written word. I believe what the written word says. The written word says, Jesus healed them all. If he did it before, he's doing it now and will always do it. So right now, I am a candidate for the power of God. Say it again. I am a candidate for the power of God. Say it for the last time. I am a candidate for the power of God. Say all the organs in my body are responding to the healing power right now. All my organs, all my organs, all my organs are responding to the healing word right now. My organs are cooperating with the word of God. My cells, my tissues, my tendons, my ligaments, my muscles, my brain, all the cells, my mind. Right now, the power of God is working through my mind, my hands, my knees, my legs, my waist, my back. All the organs in my body are responding to the word of God right now now say satan you have no right to occupy any portion of my body my body has been bought with a price therefore i glorify god in my body which are gods i resist the devil i resist sickness i resist disease right now out of my body Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Are you ready to walk out of here with your miracles? Lift your right hands to heaven. Let me pray. Now, wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice, get ready to do what you couldn't do before. As soon as I finish praying. If you couldn't move your leg, move it. If you couldn't move your hand, move it. If there were organs of your body that were not responding, they will start responding right now. God's healing power is operating in this place. Thank you, Father. If you're watching online, same. If you're watching 
listening on radio, same. If you're watching on social media, same. The power of God is moving. If you have sick people by you right now, as I begin to pray, I'd like you to place your hand on them. Those of you watching on television, radio, and on all the various platforms, just lay your hands on people that are sick around you right now. God's power is going to flow through that whole place. And the power of God is right here. There's no distance in the spirit. I want to hear your amens like thunder as I pray. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you're working with your word, confirming it with signs and wonders. So I speak to every disease and infirmity, the oppression of the enemy, pain, discomfort in your body, in the name of Jesus, be flushed out. Be flushed out. You pain, go. 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 We resist you. You flee right now. In the name of Jesus, your bone be healed, your back be healed, kidneys be healed, cancers die off. In the name of Jesus, I command every disease in your hearing, hearing conditions, be corrected, be corrected, be corrected. Every organ of your body that has been damaged, I command a creative miracle to replace it. Receive a creative miracle. Receive a creative miracle. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Numbness be flushed out. I command numbness be flushed out. The life of God flows in your body. The life of God flows in your back. The life of God flows in your spinal cord. The life of God flows in your leg. The life of God flows in your hands. The life of God flows through your eyes. I command your sight restored. 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 In the name of Jesus. I come against blood tubes. Flushed out. No sperm count. Corrected. In the name of Jesus. That family believing God for the fruit of the womb. Right now. Receive that miracle. Receive that miracle. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Ayaya. Asthma. Out. Asthma. Out. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke allergies. Allergies. I rebuke you. Flush out. In the name of Jesus. Ayada. Ayada. Ayada, Satan, break your holes and out in the name of Jesus. Oppression be broken. Oppression be broken. Oppression be broken. Oppression be broken. In the name of Jesus. Body be healed. Body be healed. Body be healed. Body be healed. Thank you, Father. Nekoroto Sakai. Nekeroto nakalata Zazoka lada baba Enge bojoko lodo boho Akara nakoto nakata Membro kataka kaka That pain is living That pain is living That pain is living all over your body Is living now Thank you father Praise you father Lift those hands and begin to praise him Begin to thank him Begin to worship him Tell yourself, I've seen the evidence in the world. I have it in my body. I have seen the evidence in the world. I have it in my body. Lift those hands and give him thanks. Lift those hands. Begin to worship him. Begin to bless him. Begin to praise the name of Jesus. Begin to praise the name of Jesus. If you're watching online, go ahead. If you're listening by way of radio, go ahead. If you're watching on television, go ahead. Just wave those hands and begin to praise him. Begin to bless him. Begin to bless him. Begin to bless him. There's somebody here with a broken toe. That toe is being corrected. Right now, there's a miracle on that toe. Check that toe. Check that toe. It has just been corrected supernaturally. Thank you, Father. Praise 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 you, Father. Glory to God. Somebody shout a powerful amen. amen. Are we excited this morning? Amen. Now quickly begin to do what you couldn't do before. We're going to clap. We're going to jump. We're going to shout. We're going to scream. We're going to run around this place. Go ahead and celebrate. Do what you couldn't do before. Jump if you couldn't jump. Run if you couldn't run. Do something. Do something. Do something crazy. Celebrate your healing. Glory! Glory! Whoa. Do it, go ahead. Do what.
what you couldn't do you couldn't bend bend you couldn't move move check check yourself the power of god all over this place all over this place all over this place all over this place on television on facebook miracles are happening all over miracles are happening all over miracles are happening all over glory now i speak to your businesses i speak to your career i speak to your jobs i speak to the work of your hands in the name of jesus receive miracles of provision miracles of provision miracles of provision miracles of provision that money you've been waiting for by the favor of god receive it receive it that job has been received that job has been released that promotion is released that appointment is released papers for citizenship approved it has been approved receive it in the name of jesus ay, 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 ay. systems are shifting systems are shifting systems are shifting men are shifting in the name of jesus receive those jobs receive those jobs that check is signed that check is signed receive it in the name of jesus and i decree that this week this week opens up to you a harvest of goodness harvest of goodness harvest of goodness harvest of goodness left right center even where they forgot you they remember you right now miracle phone calls miracle alerts miracle phone calls miracle alerts miracle emails receive them in the name of jesus it is done it is done glory to god go ahead and celebrate one more time celebrate tell you the truth of the matter is we are in a season all kinds of things are happening get ready to just be harvesting harvesting good things harvesting favors the enemy has been pushed off and whatever stood on the way has given way there's a traffic of blessings there's a traffic of testimonies arriving at your house whose house whose house whose house the thing is arriving at your houses. Are your gates open? Are your doors open? What about your storehouses? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. I believe that we have a lot of miracles in this service. If you're watching online right now, there's a phone call you can call to share your testimony with us. And those of you that need further prayer, you can call that same number. Our pastors are waiting to pray for you. The number is plus 234-803-275-6104. I repeat, plus 234-803-275-6104. Last time, plus 234-803-275. 275-6104. You can call right now, share with us what God has done for you in this service. And also, you, you want further prayer, our pastors are waiting to pray for those of you connecting around the world. But are we blessed this morning? Jesus healed them all. Praise God. Once I take up your offerings, I will take a few testimonies. All over the house, I'll take a few testimonies this morning. And those of you online can also email us your testimonies. You know, email your testimonies to us. Either ask the counselor at gmail.com or Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Just shoot in your testimonies. Now, every time we teach you the word of God, we give you an opportunity to honor the word of God. You honor the word of God by your giving. Please listen carefully. Jesus went to his hometown they were not worthy to receive him because they were in dishonor. They were not worthy to receive. So he couldn't do anything for them. So what did Jesus do? He started teaching. Teaching to create in them an understanding of honor. You have been taught. And so because you have been taught, 
you are not in ignorance. Okay? So, we function in honor to the word of God. I'd like you to package your honor offering. Grab it if you have it with you. You know, package it. Those of you online who are taking the honor offering this morning, we honor the word of God. In all the campuses, we're taking the honor offering. We honor the word of God. We honor the teaching of God's word. And, um, you, you know, uh, the banking details are scrolling on the screen for those around the world, for television audience, for TV audience, radio. I mean, um, uh, radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush, will read the banking details for you in a few minutes. But TV audience and the social media audience, the banking details are scrolling and uh, we want you to package your offerings. Lift up your offerings. We want to pray over them. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for the privilege to honor your word. Thank you for those giving online. Thank you for those giving on TV and those giving on radio and everybody that is giving to support this work so together we can get this gospel to the ends of the earth. And as we give this morning, we give with joy. We give with gratitude in our hearts. And we thank you that both we and our offering have been accepted before you. And we rejoice that by the end of this service, we are the better for it today. So we decree that every need is met supernaturally. Every desire is granted. New relationships open up for your people. Favors like never before. And above all, my God supplies all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Can I have that amen on a note of finality? Amen. The online community in a few minutes will sign you off. But like we said, if you have testimonies, email them to us. You know, um, shoot them by email. Or you want to call that number quickly. Somebody's with the phone. Our pastors are waiting to get calls from you and respond to you. And at 11 a.m., I'll still be teaching the part two of these. And every day from tomorrow till next Sunday, we are here teaching the word of God. Then from next Sunday, we will start Ted season five. Ted huh? season five. Training, evangelism, and discipleship. I, I hope you know that this year, our mandate is word, prayer, making disciples, and living supernatural. So we are focused. We are not distracted. We know exactly what we are running with. So next Sunday we start third season five. Training, evangelism, and discipleship. Because we have to equip you enough to do the work of ministry. Are you excited about it? Alright, so we love you guys. We look forward to seeing all of you, the online community, at 11 a.m. GMT plus one. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning. Glory! Blessed by this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damino, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com